has that really changed the way we as humans, as the end user, perceive information and where we take our content from? Or is that still a progress that is still going to be going on for many, many years to come? I definitely see it is still evolving, especially from what you said, editorial generated content, right? Uh, New York Times, BBC, CNN, Wall Street Journal, they're all, majority of them are editorial generated content, which is, I would say, the gen one of how media started. And they still as hold a lot of centralized power in terms of influence and impact. However, I, I do see a switch with the rise of Patreon, Medium, Substack, like even Mira, like XYZ, even Litecoin. We're actually doing some more focusing on user-generated content. And I still see it evolving. I think they're all looking for a way to sustain this uh, whole business model. And in terms of how we can gather writers and how we get the readers is because I think we're not lagging of writers. We are lacking of readers. How we can actually gain the attention span of readers to read quality content. So I think it is still evolving. And now with the web free in place, people can have more imagination of what potential it could be in terms of this transformation, I would say. I think especially during COVID, we see a lot more information or had a rise in terms of readership on this kind of user generated content during COVID, especially because it was outbreak from China and China had a more compressed media landscape. So in terms of people wanted to know what happened inside, it actually relied on a lot of this Web3 media platform to actually distribute their information. So I would say social context actually also play a very important role in terms of how people adopt or how, it, how, how people actually change their behavior of where they preserve information. And different like major crises will also bring a new behavior. And I think I see this a lot more um, during COVID and post-COVID. Actually, also during some Western event, right, like the presidential election of Donald Trump, uh, the whole thing, how they switch from major media to social media. I think the whole landscape, no matter it's institutional player or users like from the funnel, bottom of the funnel, the whole funnel is actually evolving to become more and more hybrid. And even I think tier one media are actually struggling to keep their writers or columnists on them because why would they pay, why would they let New York Times like take a majority cut of their readership or even traffic? Instead, they can actually start up there on Patreon or Medium or something like that. So I think there is still like a unspoken battle between two. And I think the balance between these two will, will be very interesting to see. Yeah. So one thing that we also observe and notice is people who actually care enough about their content, they're also moving away from platform centric publishing platform. Let's say Mira the XYZ or Mira uh, or Medium or Substack. So one thing that writers actually don't have time to manage is you need to handle multiple platform or distribution channel. And that's actually a headache. Let's say we had a podcast today. We want to put it on YouTube, Shop, uh, uh, Spotify, or even like Google Podcasts. Like, there's a lot of distribution channel. And how they can actually distribute better sometimes might not be lie on one single platform. So our approach is also the same. So we're, Litecoin isn't a platform itself. It's actually a infrastructure layer. It's like a publishing stack that can facilitate in all kinds of websites, especially WordPress. Because we believe if a writers actually care enough of their own content, they actually want the full autonomy of their sites, their traffics, so that they can work on the SEO, so that they can monetize or explore different business model. It's just not one. Uh, we believe it could be a hybrid business model. So some might still rely on a lot of Web2 business model, let's say subscription, let's say uh, advertising. But then they can also add some element of Web3. And that's where our plugin, our tools came in, where they can actually play around with, uh, collect as an NFT, or even monetize with our like button. So all this kind of mixture, I believe, would fit in the current publishing landscape because it's still evolving. I don't think there will be a clear cut between Web2 and Web3. So if we won't see like a clear jump. Let's like uh, for journalists saying, oh, let's jump directly into Web3. 
let's set everything on mirror the X Y Z or like something like that. It, I think it's really hard for them to get over that hurdle. That's why our position of our product, majority of them, are actually the bridge between Web two and Web three. They have a choice to get a hybrid business model. They have a choice to store their stuff on IPFS or Arweave, or they can also still choose to store on centralized platform. It doesn't matter. We just we believe it would be a process of education to、uh, layman users, especially in the publishing industry, for media players, for publishers, for journalists, for editor. To understand, hey, there's actually something new that you can add in to your current workflow. So I think that's very interesting to see their acceptance level. I think also on the recent like NFT hype, a lot of majority of magazines or newspaper actually exploring that as well. I think Times did it. Some of them not quite successful. Some of them did quite well. I think they are all start to explore new business model to survive, right? So. I will see this evolvement coming along.